the weakest argument that I see non-traditional students make is the old pre-meds podcast session number 264. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I get to take questions submitted by you over at premedforms.com and answer them here on the podcast. Before we move any further, I want to talk about our sponsor, Blueprint MCAT, with the MCAT Minute. Something that a lot of students don't recognize is that MCAT content doesn't help you be a strong MCAT student. You have to take practice exams. And that's where Blueprint really shines. If you go to Reddit, they'll they'll let you know that Blueprint exams are the second best exams out there. And you say, Dr. Gray, who wants to be second best? Well, when first best is the double AMC, right? The actual people who make the MCAT, second place is not too shabby. Go check out blueprintprep.com and see what Blueprint has to offer you in terms of full-length practice exams. You can get one free one, which you're actually covering on the MCAT podcast. We're covering full-length one. You get that for free as well as a half-length diagnostic, again, at blueprintprep.com. So let's go ahead and jump into our question today and talk about prereqs and MCAT expiring. Our student is looking for advice for a 33-year-old looking to give medical school another try. They say, my brief backstory, I graduated in 2009 with a 3.88 GPA, around a 3.7 science GPA. I applied to medical school and got on the wait list before being rejected. I've since been traveling and working in other fields, but I am back in the U.S., and I want to give medical school another try. Let me preface this by saying that I now, or that I know rather, I have a big uphill battle given my age of 33. Hmm. I've noticed that my prereqs and MCAT scores have, quote, expired according to everything that I have read. Obviously, I need to prepare and retake the MCAT as well as get involved in extracurriculars, but I'm really wrestling with what to do about the prereq situation. If I do not need to improve my GPA, what would be the better option between a post-bac, a do-it-yourself post-bac, or an SMP, or master's, for someone in my position? I've seen the curriculum for various post-bac programs, and the idea of retaking so many courses that I did well in is not something I am excited about. Neither would I. I'd like uh, to relearn what I have to for the MCAT rather independently, but get my extracurricular experiences and then add a few higher level pre-med classes to show adcoms that I can still excel academically. Would this suffice or should I officially retake basically all of the prereqs as well? Also, I'm open to international med schools, even though I know it is important to find one that is U.S. accredited and has a good U.S. residency matching potential. I'm open to DO, but I prefer the MD route if at all possible. I would truly appreciate any knowledgeable advice. Great question. Really laid out, right? All of the the questions and dilemmas for non-traditional students, especially especially students who aren't needing to fix their GPA. If this was a student who had a 2.8 GPA, then it's very easy. Go back and take the classes. But when you have a 3.88 GPA, 3.7 science GPA, you say, I've already done it. Why do I need to do it again? And the good news is you don't. Most medical schools don't have expiration dates on prereqs. That's a big myth out there in the pre-med world. There are some schools that have preferences for more recent coursework, and there are some schools that do have expiration dates on prereqs. So I'm not saying it's across the board, but there are some schools out there. The far majority don't have any expiration dates. They will want to see recent coursework, not necessarily unexpired prereqs, but just recent coursework to show that you still enjoy being in a classroom, that you still enjoy being a student. That's going to be important. And so, yes, I think in this specific situation 
for the far majority of schools, there is zero need to go back and do a post back. Uh, well, to do a full post back, to do a SMP, to do any sort of formal post back. I think you should do post back classes, but not go back and repeat your prereqs. Go back and take some upper division courses. Go back and dip your toes into a genetics or a cell bio or or something else maybe that you didn't take as an undergrad that you can take now. And I would be very careful. You haven't been a student for a long time. So make sure that you're stepping in ready to swim because it's going to be different for you, especially not being a student for a long time. And the, the last thing that you want to do is come back and do poorly in your classes. That will hurt you more than anything else. The other thing to think about is your MCAT, right? The MCAT Science Foundation, all of that foundation has been crumbling, withering away because you haven't been using that knowledge, that information that you learned and you did so well so well at in undergrad. And so retaking classes potentially will help for the MCAT. Again, not necessarily because those classes are quote unquote expired, but because they'll help you prepare for the MCAT. Now you obviously took the MCAT once, you maybe did well on it back in the day, maybe you'll be prepared to do well on it again without that. Can you do it? Absolutely. The the best story I love in this situation is a physical therapist that emailed me about a year ago now as I'm recording this. And she's a physical therapist. She's in Texas, applied to some of the Texas medical schools, got an interview, was accepted, hadn't taken any classes since she graduated physical therapy school 20 years ago. Took the MCAT, did well, got into medical school. 20-year-old classes. It's It's doable. So again, from, from a prereq standpoint, not a problem. Uh, I haven't mentioned it all, just in case you don't know, the MCAT does expire. Most medical schools will tell you um, two or three years, go to the medical school that you're interested in. They'll typically tell you the, the oldest MCAT they will accept. And it's usually in terms of like September 2020 is the, the last MCAT they'll accept. So some someone who took it in August of 2020, that MCAT is now expired. So it just depends. Go look. It's usually three years. There are some two-year ones out there as far as I know, but the MCAT unfortunately does expire. And then definitely extracurriculars. If you're coming back into medicine, one of your biggest arguments is going to be why now? So make sure that you can formulate that story and, and you can check out my pre-med playbook guide to the medical school personal statement to formulate that story about why now. The weakest argument that I see non-traditional students make is I wanted to be a physician then and I went and did all of this stuff and I want to be a physician now without any sort of reflection or activity that shows that they truly want to be a physician now other than they kind of got bored with what they were doing and they're like, okay, I guess I'll go to medical school now. So make sure that you're getting those activities that prove that this is what you want to do. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for joining me today. And again, go check out blueprintprep.com, our sponsor for this week's episode of the old pre-meds podcast with the MCAT Minute. Again, blueprintprep.com, formerly known as Next Step Test Prep. I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.